Bill Gates, Michael Dell, and Steve Jobs all read our next guest newsletter to get a sense of his predictions. Right now, he's worried about intellectual property theft and its impact on the global economy. Mark Anderson is the CEO of Strategic News Service, and he joins us in business today. Welcome back to the show. Thanks very much, Margaret. Nice to be here. Well, you know, we just had China's president in town, and we one did. of the, the wins that, you know, many analysts said was that China's recognizing the need to protect intellectual property because they've started to see innovation internally. But it sounds like that's not enough for you. You're, you're worried. I'm actually not buying that story. No. I'll give you an example. Uh, someone told that to me two weeks ago, and the, as an example of the internal innovation they used, the example of the 4,000 miles of high-speed rail in China. A week later, I found out that Kawasaki Heavy Industries is suing China for theft of IP because it was their IP. Well, a lot so this of, wasn't local innovation in China. This was stealing from the Japanese. Well, we have heard about you know private equity investments in some of the smaller tech companies that are starting up and the like. But you you, you don't think that the Chinese have truly changed in policy? That wasn't something that President Obama won That's last right. week. That's right. I don't see that at all. Well, what is it that you're seeing in terms of theft right now besides that high-speed rail that makes you worried about U.S. corporations? I'll make a really simple statement. I think that the Chinese have intentionally, as a government, targeted various industries that they thought were critical. And in each of those industries, they have already obtained the IP they need to go forward. Like I, which, which industries? Car design, aerospace, chip design. Those are the top three, I guess. But there are, there are hundreds of these things. They kind of can't go down a ladder. And so imagine if you were a planner, one of the top nine guys in China, you decide you have an industrial policy, and this week it's aerospace, and, and, or this five years. Mm -hmm. And you send folks out in every possible way to obtain that information. It, that's it quite an ac ac accusation. I mean, that's industrial espionage that yes. you're describing. Well, I'm saying it's more than industrial espionage. I don't think that we've ever seen two things. The amount of IP transfer between the West and China it's never been done before. There's never a story in any part of human history where so much IP has been transferred so fast. And the other is we've never seen one country mount an effort so dedicated to the theft of IP or to obtaining it. And the, what examples are you looking at? Of the theft? Of the theft. I and mean, what's been reported so far? <clears throat> well, there are, are hundreds of examples. Uh, last year we saw a huge issue where Google got hacked by China. Mm -hmm. uh, the password uh, program and the source code called Gaia was stolen from Google and we thought Google was pretty secure they apparently were not and so all the passworded programs run on Google including Gmail were available for inspection by the Chinese and they went in and took uh, names of human rights uh, protesters including American students right. uh, there were 30 other companies that were hacked by the Chinese at the same time who didn't have the guts to stand up and say I got it too but we know there were 30 more why 30 uh, that was the number that Google released. So I think Google knew that number. Mm -hmm. We have seen uh, the Department of Defense put out some uh, commercial press releases to corporate chiefs saying the level of attack by China has reached unprecedented levels on both DOD related sites and on commercial sites. So we're getting warnings from the Defense Department that they're seeing this. We see this in other countries, we see it in Britain, we see it in Europe, we see it in Japan. Um, there are, I mean, I can go on and on. You know, Ford just got uh, arrested someone who had been a tenure employee who stole the 40,000 documents on transmission design from Ford mm -hmm. and sent them to Shanghai. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> someone was, was, was convicted uh, two days ago in Hawaii. Uh, for stealing intellectual property from the U.S. Well, we heard from the president just last night um, calls for competitiveness to keep up with China. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of investment that this country is making, right. he cited national broadband as mm -hmm. a real initiative. Yes. I mean, how, how much of a, a game changer is that for you? Huge. Uh, the, the largest game, from a technology perspective, the largest game changer economically you could possibly put into place is general national broadband. The Australians understand this and they're doing it now. There are many other countries that have done it. We used to be fairly high on the list because it was early in the game, mm -hmm. but as other governments understand how important this is, we keep falling. And this is just the, the, the pipes to get on the internet. It's All treating it, is, it like yeah, utility. Exactly. exactly. It, what it does is it frees up every business, every student, every citizen to be connected to the global knowledge base, wherever it is, and to do commerce on that, on that knowledge base. So in that way, you thought this was a win for technology last night? Yes, absolutely.
All right. You always come up with fascinating <laughs> ideas. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Mark Anderson of Strategic News Service, for sharing your thoughts today. We're going to take